all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect, to you all I say greetings and shalom. All right, this lesson shouldn't be too long, you know, and honestly, I wasn't going to take the time out to even do a lesson on this, but Lord willing, it's edifying, uh, you know, because people are so easily infatuated with shit, man, and people are so easily to jump on the bandwagon for for trends and shit like that man and that's what's the problem with uh babylon in this in this uh this babylonian juice man and their wine okay because whatever people see going on they it's all about uh being followers in this place nobody wants to be a leader everybody wants to be a follower nobody wants to be a trend setter everybody just wants to follow the trend man you know, even the Hebrew is like thing. People are not doing that in sincerity and truth. They're just doing it to be followers instead of actually understanding the fullness and the importance of it. But nonetheless, I want to uh, let me show you this quick video. So this is about this fucking broom challenge going on. And I, I saw a brother did a video on this. Um, you know, I'm not on social media, none, so I don't be knowing what's really going on. But I, I looked it up and I wanted to get some edification on it because I thought I found something that was interesting about it. But let me play this video just so you can see what it's talking about. So, you know, regardless of what the reason is, man, these people are so infatuated with simple shit, man. OK, so so what, man? You know, we used to fucking balance broomsticks on our fingers and shit like that. Like, you know, bro, like at the end of the day, just get over it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, even if you feel like it's the gravitational pull, like it's really not that impressive, bro. Just let the shit go, you know, but I really want to get into where. Why, why a broomstick? You know, why, why couldn't they say a mop? This is the only day a year a mop would do it. You know, why a broomstick? And so I, I wanted to go and find out why did it have to be the broom? Why did it couldn't it be something else? So um, let me first I'm going to get uh, this this verse and this, uh, I believe, Exodus 22 and 18. But really, that broom goes back to witchcraft. OK. Exodus 22 and 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Let's see if I can find some other witch verses. All right. We're not supposed to suffer a witch to live. Okay. Right. Deuteronomy 18. It says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that use a divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Okay. It says, For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. First Samuel 15 and 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. So, uh, you know, our people are rebellious against Yahweh by Shemi Al Our people are always trying to find uh, witchcraft. Okay. Uh, Michael 5 and 12. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. OK, so now you're wondering where I get this witch thing. So let me let me go. Um, matter of fact, yeah, they put articles about this and said, what is the broom challenge? Internet hoax sweeps social media. OK, so then I saw this other stuff. And, you know, this one says broom challenge. You can you can actually stand up a broom up any time during the year. But see, that's how they'll get you. They'll tell you it can be done on one one day. All right. Out of the year. And so people are just automatically mind blown. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's taking part in what's what appears to be witchcraft. OK. So now let me get um, this right here. All right. It's uh, so I typed in why do witches have brooms, you know, <laughs> growing up. And let me, let me just jump down because I don't want you to read that whole part. Growing up, you know, you see cartoons and fucking, uh, I forget what, I don't know if it's, it wasn't, might not have been Cinderella. I forget it's about these other fucking witches. I can't remember. But, you know, we would watch these different shows and things like, you know, you had a, the witches, they'd be ugly. They got like a black dress on, a black, uh, you know, the black Harry Potter sorting hat, <laughs> you know, uh, and they have a broom. And so I would never, I never thought about, hey, why are these witches jumping on brooms? Of all the things you can jump on, why, why is it a broom? You know, and that, that hit me when I saw the broom challenge. I was like, 
what is this about, man? Where where did this broom thing come from? So I looked it up. All right. So it says here for a long time, the common answer to the question of why witches flew on broomsticks was relatively straightforward, if a bit broad. The broom was a symbol of female domesticity. All right. And to be that means to be domestic. So basically a woman working in the house. OK, then it says then it says yet the broom was also phallic. This shit, Salaki. It says uh, the broom was a symbol of female domesticity, yet the broom was also phallic. So riding on one was a sim symbol of female sexuality, thus femininity and domesticity gone wild. <laughs> wow. So so something as simple as a broom, we thought it was just a broom. But see, a lot of the times it, when it comes to these other things, all right, there's a lot of information about... Um, about uh things that we don't understand it got a deeper meaning to it and a deeper understanding all right so it says phallic so i don't know if you brothers know what uh you should know what phallic symbols are but let me just type that in real quick phallic symbol all right so it says uh any object as a cigar or skyscraper that may broadly resemble represent the penis Especially such an object that symbolizes power as an automobile. So that's where you have phallic symbols like, let's see if we can get some images. The Lord hope nothing come up. But see, the, them shits look exactly like penis. That's wicked as all hell. You know, but right here, the, uh, like the Washington Monument, that's a phallic symbol. Okay. Um, hey, shit, even a missile looks like a phallic symbol. Um, let's see. Uh... Is one specific that I'm looking for that they're probably not going to show it. All this shit is about, you see, and all this is about, uh, you know, fertility. You know, that's what all of this really goes back to fertility, woman worship, you know. Okay, let me let me look up. Uh, even the tie, okay? The tie is a phallic symbol. So that's the other one because, uh, uh, the tie is a representative of dick and balls, to put it plainly, okay? And that's why people, that's why I don't wear ties anymore. You know, I used to thought ties was cool, you know, not knocking any brothers that wear ties. I know some brothers still rock them, you know? Um, and I used to like ties. I used to think it was a cool little accent to the outfit, you know, if you got on a shirt and pants or shirt and slacks, you know? Um, you know, it make, it make it an outfit pop and all that kind of stuff. But not only is it a corporate noose, but it's also a phallic symbol. OK, so these are all phallic symbols. That's a woman worship. OK, sexual, sexual empowerment, uh, lust, uh, fertility. OK, so let's read this part again. It says the broom was a symbol of female domesticity. All right. So a woman, uh, a woman's job is to take care of the, to nurture the home. Matter of fact, let's get uh, let's get Proverbs. Oh, that's the spirit. Let's go to Proverbs 31 real quick. Okay, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but um, I'm going to just gonna jump down to Proverbs 31 and 10. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of the husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She's bringeth food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her to her maidens. All right. It's another one that I wanted specifically. Um, uh, verse 27. Uh, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praiseth her. OK. Um, so of course this, you can, this goes into wisdom as well. All right. But, um, uh, it says for verse 30 says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, Yahweh, she shall be praised. Okay. So, and that's the thing when it comes to this, you know, this is, these women were not about this. These, you see that, that female, that symbol of female domesticity, that was a woman being in righteous order. That was a woman following after Yahweh Bashem Yahushad, a woman that's following after a man and serving the house and taking care of the children, taking care of the household. 
a domestic woman, like they like to say. OK, but nowadays with uh, this toxic environment that they have going on. All right. With they, they're making them think that a woman's place is in in the field and an army and in a, to be a leader of the house and to be uh, the biggest supervisor in the office. You know, that was how they fooled our women. You know, and uh, the, the brother sent the uh, thing the other day. It was about a, a Gadite, old Gadite. And he said, uh, he, they said, where did the white man go wrong? He said, the Gadite said, women did all the work. They took care of the house. Um, they cooked. They fed us. All we had to do out is go out and hunt and fish all day and come home and have sex all night. <coughs> Only the white man is stupid enough to ruin that. <coughs> and that's facts, man. You know, but now it says, um, which the white man is so-called, those are the Edomites, according to the Bible. The so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, those are the children of Israel. All right, it says, yet the broom was also phallic, so riding on one was a symbol of female sexuality. Okay, so this is women now trying to be sexualized. And the scriptures say a woman not, not to be a harlot. Let's see, let's see. Um... Let me see what uh, this is a, a Sirach 25 and 25. It says, give the water no passers, neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. All right. So, hey, uh, women ain't supposed to be out in the streets and riding on brooms, so to speak, because now the women go out and they harlots in the city go and they going riding on brooms. And I ain't talking about brooms. As a matter of fact, uh, let's get that. OK, these women go out and they, they do things they're not supposed to. And that's that's witchcraft. That's uh, that promotes adultery. OK, this is Sirach 26 and 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every head, she will sit down and open her quiver against every every arrow. That's women riding on brooms, giving land down to different men. OK. All right, it says, um, thus femininity and domesticity gone wild, which basically means they're not at home anymore. They're not being, they're taking the, the broom as a, a symbol of them, their empowerment and going out into the to the world and doing what, gadding abroad, having sex with who they want, doing what they want. All right, being wicked, having sex with different men. Okay, opening a uh, quiver to every arrow. All right, and so the, the broom challenge is actually witchcraft, man. OK, but the Lord said he's going to uh, take that witchcraft. All right. Out of the land, he's going he's going to destroy all of that nonsense, man. OK. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to read. Let's see. Just Galatians. Uh, Nahum three and four is good, too. It says because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcraft that sell the nations through our whoredoms and families through our witchcrafts. All right. So obviously, you know, this is going into uh, the things that um, uh, Babylon is doing. OK, because verse one says, go to the bloody city. It is all the full of lies and robbery. The, the prey departed not. All right. So this is talking about Babylon. And the thing is, did it not say Babylon is the mother of harlots? OK mother of witchcraft okay this is uh revelation 17 and uh five it says uh, i started for and the woman was arrayed in in the purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mother i mean mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth okay and so that that's uh, Babylon, man, that's this place, man, and how wicked, how wicked it is, man. All right, and so they're all about uh, witchcraft and idolatry and adultery. All right, they're all about that, man. All right, but the Lord is going to destroy this place from off the face of the earth, man. All right, Babylon is going to be gone. All right. It's uh, this goes on and says scary for any patriarch. It wasn't just women, however. The first known reference to witches flying on broomsticks was confessed by a suspected male witch. All right, so probably a sodomite while he's being tortured in 1453. Sodomite. There was there was also once a common pagan fertility fertility ritual where poles, pitchforks, and brooms, basically phallic objects in general, were piloted through the fields with people jumping as high as they could to entice the crops to grow that height. 
See, it all goes back to witchcraft, man. It's the discovery. The book said the discovery of witchcraft published in 1584 describes these festivals as such. At these magical assemblies, the witches never fail to dance. And in their dance, they sing these words. Har, har, devel, devel. Dance here, dance here. Play, play here, play there. Oh, play here, play here. Sabbath, Sabbath. You see that? And whilst they sing and dance and everyone had the broom in their hand and holds it up aloft. So they were doing witchcraft ceremonies, man, chanting these words, carrying their broomsticks. All right. On what they believe is their Sabbath. All right. They're, they're sacrifices to Satan and witchcraft and demons. And this goes on and on. But I, like I said, I didn't want to make this video too long. Hey, Lord willing, this is edifying. You know, you brothers, uh, you know, you can look up. Uh, look this up. That's the that's the link at the top. AtlasObscura.com, and the name of this is "Sex, Drugs, and Broomsticks: The Origins of the Iconic Witch." You see that? Hey, this is a good lesson to go on separately as well, man. Because you know, I was just trying to get this broomstick broom challenge shit, man, which is witchcraft and 